Yeah, so we just finished playing Crossroads of Heroes, a uh, really fantastic, immersive, exciting wuxia theme strategy board game. Um, very excited to have Pat Piper over here. Um, Happy to be here. Locally based, uh, Hong Kong based uh, board game designer, obviously the brains behind this awesome project. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you very much for, for joining us. Thank you. Um, I'm going to cut right to the chase. This is a very exciting theme, uh, very close to a lot of our hearts, especially based in Asia, growing up with Wuxia topics. So how did you get, uh, you know, from an idea into this, you know, final product? Okay. Well, I, I've always liked Wuxia, you know, growing up as a kid in, uh, in Asia. I spent a lot of time watching Wuxia. Basically, it was the only thing I would watch in Chinese. Uh, so yeah, obviously a lot of the a lot of the books, mm -hmm. uh, movies are, are done in Chinese. Uh, um, but that's that actually helps the inspiration. Right? Yeah, that's something I'm uh, I'm kind of afraid to admit because I've never read the books. I've seen only the the movies and the, the TV series. But that's my main inspiration for making this game. Right, so mm -hmm. you, you know, we were we were talking just now that this has been kind of like seven years in the making. Um, how how did that go from like an initial idea into just becoming like a just a great project uh, i was working on other projects other projects at the time and this just came up as a way for me to you know take my mind off those projects you know as a, as a way for me to relax mm -hmm. i guess yeah uh, yeah to you know bring me back to those childhood moments yeah yeah I, I play a lot of video games and computer games in my in my childhood but never bought games except for you know, occasionally you know for monopoly mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, uh and uh, seven, eight years ago, I think board games was uh, beginning to pick up. In uh, they're getting more and more different, like you know, games like these. And I mean, look at look at all these games, yeah. wonderful games. Yeah. And um, so um, at the time, I, I I started getting into playing board games, and and I just I thought to myself, something's just missing. Like there are not too many Asian themed games out there, and. Uh, I just, I just begin to wonder maybe it's a good idea to do why, why isn't there like a wuxia game I mean it seemed like the perfect theme for a board game you, you have these different sects with different philosophies and school of thoughts and strategies you know and different all these characters it would make like a great board game and uh, it started off like almost like it started off as almost like a, a joke. Yeah. I was uh, doing sketches with, I would, you know, show it to friends yeah. and, you know, to my then girlfriend, my wife now. And, uh, you know, I had ideas for this, you know, like theme, uh, 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 all these things that people automatically know. You know yeah. Anyone who knows Wuxia knows. Sort of like creating your own Wuxia world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then that just sort of took off. Mm -hmm. uh, started, you know, did that sort of just be, start taking form? Mm -hmm. uh, then you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm really sort of getting into this. I'm really, you know, immersed in this world, mm -hmm. right? So obviously, you know, as, as you're creating this game mm -hmm. um, or as you're uh, sort of taking baby steps uh, towards the formation of this game, mm -hmm. um, how, how did that actually, you know, you start off with the doodling. Were there any sort of reference games that you, you were looking at in terms of putting together, you know, the mechanics and all that stuff, or was was all of that just sort of just came uh, from your head? Um, well, there's certainly influences from other games, but I try not to use any type of game as a base when I uh, come up with an, a new idea because I don't want to be too much influenced by those. So my main thing with uh, any game that. I wanted to create is the story and the theme so that's very important to me first yeah, thing yeah. is the immersiveness because I want to transport myself to you know uh, to a different time mm -hmm. different place when, mm -hmm. when playing games and mm -hmm. um, the characters so I started with those instead mm -hmm. of you know the mechanics so mm -hmm. yeah and, and that that was actually something that I was you know really fascinated by mm -hmm. uh, just the amount of thought uh, mm -hmm you know, the amount of depth in the world building, right? And, and you can actually see it, you know, beyond just the game, um, you've created backstories that yeah. you've posted on mm -hmm. Facebook, right? You've okay. created campaigns for specific sects, okay. um, you know, with, with sex specific your stories and, and abilities and all that stuff. So, you know, obviously spending a lot of time creating that world. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we were talking a little bit about, you know, the design journey as well mm. um, and obviously I would love to hear your thoughts as well um, 
sort of behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the glamorous stuff is like, oh, you know, creating the characters, creating the creating the worlds, uh, creating the mm -hmm. game system, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But what were the challenges that 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 you saw or that you encountered? Uh, were there any obstacles that you faced and, and so on? Well, the main obstacle would be because um, I'm, I'm a, I have a background of uh, animation and, and artist. Before. I've been doing that for twenty years, and it's pretty apparent. Here, and yeah. uh, um, that was my main thing: uh, doing uh, artwork and animation. So uh, the biggest step was to take that because animation and art is what you do on your own you know it's very uh, it's a very it's subjective mm -hmm. okay sure yeah yeah but uh, when you turn it into a game it's for, it's for the players to enjoy and yeah. that took me a while to uh, adjust you know because um, design is all communication with you know, you know the end user and that took me a while to adjust to and because I, I I figured I had to take it to play testers to mm -hmm. play the game. In the beginning, I designed the game mainly for you know self recreation mm -hmm. with friends and family. Yeah. So, uh, but to take it one step further and take it you know to the public to play test was 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 difficult. It's always been such a solo project from the beginning. From the beginning, um, I, like I never met anyone. I didn't even know that. A community exists in mm, Hong Kong yeah. until I took this to Spiel and came back and people start, start started making contact with mm -hmm. people. But before then, I was it was mostly just with friends and family, and those were the only people that I sure. I hear from, like you know. Yeah. So, and uh, I didn't want to work on it for too long. I mean, mm -hmm. seven years has been a really long time. Uh, I mean, I spent a lot of time on it, and it. it it just didn't make sense to keep it as a personal thing. Sure. So, it's the right time to. So uh, of, yeah. So two yeah. years ago, or was it? Yeah, 20, 2016, I decided to take it to Spiel and just you know, ha have it, you know, give it give it a chance to to show uh, what other people think and and uh, the feedback was good and and uh, I started building confidence and I, I get a lot a lot of good. Uh, feedback and how to improve the game and uh, what things what we can do to uh, make you know the duel more interesting and that came later and and okay. started more intensive play testing right after spiel right that's when i found you know like Vince and uh, you know other communities to help me test the game and you know we were talking a little bit about you know the self publishing aspect too mm -hmm. um, i know that this has been a game that you've a game project that you've driven by mm -hmm. yourself pretty much mm -hmm. um, so then obviously it got, got funded on Kickstarter last year. Okay. Congratulations on that, by the way. Um, so, how was the Kickstarter campaign? Was it stressful? Did you enjoy it? You know how? I mean, you you have a lot of international backers too. So yeah. you formed a community just around this game. Like, how how did that feel? How how was the whole process? Well, everything. I mean, it was scary, uh, and uh, it was exciting, and. Uh, all of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah. But then you obviously you had to work with manufacturers um, and shipping the game and all that stuff. Was it a relief uh, that you you know got the game shipped, or um, was are, are you looking forward you know looking ahead uh, to seeing what else you can do uh, with, with this community, with this idea, with this concept? Well, I was I was really I was really relieved when it was shipped. That's the biggest concern that we had. I mean, we wouldn't even think about it. Was just me and my wife working on this throughout the whole time. I mean, we had help from friends and you know, family as well. But mainly, it was just me and my wife working on this. Mm -hmm. And we had to work, uh, find our manufacturer and uh, the shipping part, which is like a nightmare. You know? <laughs> that's, sure. that's, that's the worst part. Sure, sure. <laughs> that we had no idea. We didn't know where to begin. Yeah. So, uh, so it was such a relief that we eventually got it shipped out to other other baggage. That's our top pri priority. Um, everything else like retailing <laughs> and distribution, all that came afterwards because mm -hmm. we we were so so swamped with all these different tasks that we had to do. We uh, like selling the game came afterwards. I mean, sure. it, it sounded strange, but that's how it came to be. And so, you know, I want to also talk about the community aspect mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people who are very involved in the story. They they love the characters, they love the world. Mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of interaction uh, on your Facebook page and, and overall in the campaign, right? Um, so, what do you think about the game? Uh, what is it about the game that draws people in? Um, you know, 
and, and really kind of an extension to that, what are you particularly proud of uh, through this of this game? Yeah, I, th I think what I like most about uh, well, just creating the game itself is uh, coming up with the stories and the characters and kind of you know infusing um, all these different philosophies into the characters and the mm -hmm. sex mm -hmm. and uh, linking those you know into a coherent world that makes sense to the player. Yeah, so uh, obviously, you know, whatever project you come up with next, um, it's very clear that you put a lot of thought and passion into it. Uh, we really felt that uh, when we were playing the game because, I mean, as you can see, we put our passion into it while playing it as well. It's nice to so, see that. so really, really just a, a, a great game. Congratulations again. Um, thank so, thank you again for being here um, and for introducing this wonderful game to the world of board games. Um, so, yeah, Crossroads of Heroes. This is Pat Piper. Um, uh, flying the flag for Hong Kong-based game designers. Uh, we'll see you again next time Great. with another Meet the Designers interview. All right.